Hey guys, so today's video is going to be part two of this Disney College Program series. It's not even a series because there's only two parts to it, but if you're watching this, you probably already saw part one, but just in case you didn't, I posted on my Instagram asking you guys to ask any and all questions that you may have about the Disney College Program, and what ended up happening was I was filming the video and I was answering all these questions. I made sure to write all of them down and the video was getting really long, so I decided that I might as well just break it up into two parts. So that's why the intro to this video is non-existent, so that's why I'm here right now. So I'm definitely going to put the link to the first part of this video in my description box, and I'll also probably put it up here somewhere so that you guys know where to find it. So in this video and in part two, what I'm getting into is more of my experience on the program. In the first part, I kind of addressed like requirements for getting into the program and the application and stuff like that. So in this section, I'm getting more into the whole experience of the program and my time on it. So if during the video I say anything like, oh, I'm mentioned this earlier or something like that, that's me referring to part one. So anything that I say that I kind of refer back to, it's just gonna be related to the part one video. So if you wanna see this entire thing, I highly recommend going and watching that if you haven't already. I hope you guys like this. Feel free to comment below any questions that you have, which I'll probably say at the end of this video. But so without further ado, let's get right into this video. Hope you guys enjoy. Moving on to questions related to my experience in the program. So a big question that I got asked so many times is what does your schedule look like? For me personally, it was almost always 40 hours. I pretty much got a full work week, a full 40 hour week every week, especially when I worked in quick service. Most of you know this, but I'm gonna say it real quick. When I worked in quick service, I worked at Pecos Bill. So I worked there from August to January and then on my extension, which got cut short, but it was about like January to March, I worked in Tomorrowland in Magic Kingdom merchandise. I got a little bit less hours when I worked in merchandise because Pecos is extremely busy and it's a very, very popular place. So they constantly needed people to be working there. And also it's a very big place and a place that needs a lot of cast members working at the same time. So basically overall almost always got 40 hours. In terms of what specific hours those were and what a typical day would look like, it changed a lot. One thing I definitely noticed when I worked at Pecos is that when I was new, I was given a ton of closing shifts. So if you're working in food and you're worried about that, I'm not trying to like warn you like it's a bad thing, but I've noticed that at least at Pecos, the new people got the closing shifts. I think that they give you earlier shifts with seniority. And I think that Disney does that a lot is they focus a lot on seniority with this kind of stuff. So as new people were coming in, I was getting less and less closing shifts because I was one of the first arrivals. I was August 5th. So as all of those later arrivals were coming in, they were getting the closing shifts and I was getting less of them. So then as my time kind of went on, I was usually getting shifts that started at around 11 because that's when Pecos opened. They were usually pretty long. So they would go till maybe like nine. I would say 11 to nine was a very, that's an average. I would get 11 to 10. Sometimes I would get 11 to 11. <laughs> and then sometimes I would get lucky and I'd get a day shift like 11 to five. Then when I worked in merchandise, I will admit I got a lot of closing shifts and that never really changed. It was almost always closing. It wasn't that big of a deal to me because closing in food is a lot different than closing in merchandise. I can only really give you my answers from those two roles because those are the only roles that I worked in. For me personally, that's kind of how it looked. I don't know. I, I definitely think that a lot of people hate closing a lot. And the important thing to remember is when you're on this program, it's likely that you're going to close and you just kind of need to accept it. And it doesn't mean that you can't have time to spend like for leisure, for going to the parks, things like that. So having closing shifts is not going to ruin your program. Just keep in mind that a lot of college program participants are going to get this. Another question that I got is, did I go out to eat a lot or did I cook? I cooked almost always. Now, of course, I didn't have a car at the time. So so that definitely lowered my chances of being able to go out to eat that much. However, I did still do it occasionally if I was with friends, but even if I did have a car at the time, I don't see myself eating out that often.
often. I would just make very quick meals, so I didn't do like hardcore cooking. I would just do very quick stuff, like I would just throw in pasta or make like a very easy sandwich or stuff like that. So yeah, I usually would cook. And then when it came to packing meals to bring to work, same kind of situation. I made very simple things. I did know a lot of people that ate out a lot, but I didn't really have the budget for that. So this is a big one. How much did I make on the program? This completely depends on the role. I cannot remember how much I made in merchandise. I don't know why, but I know that in food it was 11 an hour and that's kind of the general amount that you will make. Um, I would definitely recommend looking that up online because like I said, it really does depend on the role. But I think that overall it's a range of 10 to 12 an hour. Is it hard to balance work, errands, going to the parks, hanging out with friends, et cetera, et cetera? Is hard to manage all the different things that you have going on. For me, it was not. I really don't think that it was. I made sure to keep a journal, planner, whatever. I didn't have a planner. I just used a journal. If I was starting to feel swamped and I had a lot going on, I would just make checklists. I would write out when things had to be done by. And then in terms of going out to the parks or hanging out with friends, like I never really had a problem with that. I just would dedicate my off days to hanging out with people or going to the parks. And I still had time to take every now and then to just take a day to myself. So I would usually have like two days off a week. I would usually just make plans ahead of time for one of my off days, at least one of them. So then every now and then if I had an off day where I was just exhausted and needed to take a day to myself to watch TV, get stuff done, maybe get groceries, whatever, I would spend that day doing that and that would be the whole day. And then in terms of errands and stuff, that's something I think that could be done after work or maybe in the morning on a day off. I guess my answer was all over the place there, but basically what I'm trying to say is that for me, me, it wasn't hard to balance all that and like it does it does seem like that a lot of people get the impression that because you have a full work schedule that you're not going to be able to get anything else done but I feel like as long as you plan out your week it's not that hard you just have to make sure to plan it out okay next question is it hard to take off or trade shifts this is a question I got a lot CPs only get five approved days off per term so you only get five like excused absences I guess that's the way to phrase it if you need to take a day off out of those five you go on the hub which is the like online scheduling cast member website whatever you go online and you go onto the calendar and you ask for those days off if it's those five ones I mean I think it's pretty likely that you're gonna get it if you ask like if you request off just make sure you put it in ahead of time but then aside from that when it comes to getting other days off you have to give your shift away you can't just get the day off and like I said this is only for people in the college program if you're a full-time cast member I think it's totally different like you get vacations and stuff but for CPs you only get those five approved days so then if you ever want to take off another time you have to give the shift away and if you want to trade you have to talk to your co-workers and in order to do that there are always going to be Facebook groups for this I had one for both roles so at your location you're gonna be able to get added into a group I would recommend asking maybe your trainer at the beginning of your training you take a screenshot of the shift that you want to give away or screenshot the one that you want to trade and just post that and ask about it almost always I got someone to trade with or give away to because believe it or not there are a lot of part-timers and even some full-timers that want more hours and obviously the CPs get so many hours so if you really need to give away there's a very high chance that you can give it away for at Pecos for example I can only give away to people at my location however when you're in merchandise everyone in merchandise gets basically the same training so you are actually able to give away to people who are at other locations and other parks by the way it doesn't have to be just your park I think that's a good Good enough like general summary of that if it if you have a different role if you're not in merch or food you would have to maybe research that a little more but overall that's pretty much what it is oh and an important detail with this if you are a CP and you want to give away a ship you have to get manager approval and you can't just do it on the hub so like I said the hub is where you take care of all that stuff so if I'm trading for example I found someone on the Facebook group that wants to trade with me then I would go to the hub and I would put in their perner which is like their it's your cast member ID now Number, basically and so they give you that number you put it in you look them up you trade the shift with them it's done you do that online however if you are giving away and you are a CP you can't do that so what you do is usually there'll be a little piece of paper at your work location you get one of those you write your perner the person you're giving to their perner and you write the shift date the shift time and then you give it to your managers and it's up to the managers whether or not they want to approve it this I have to emphasize depends on your managers 
I personally, in my experience, had managers that were pretty good about that, but they have a lot going on. So maybe sometimes you have to just kind of approach them in person and say, hey, I put in this giveaway. So the next question that I got a lot was, which is the best housing complex? I'm gonna go through them super quick. The four housing complexes are the Commons, Chatham, Vista Way, and Patterson. Vista Way was the very first one, as a lot of people know. It was the very first one that was made for the program. And so it's very old. If you have done a lot of research into the program, you may know that it gets a lot of negative impressions because of how old it is. I've been there, I've seen that it's old. They are starting to work on renovating the rooms. So like, it really just depends on how picky you are about it. I lived in Chatham personally. I lived there for both the program and the extension. I loved Chatham. I didn't really have any complaints about it. It's just your average apartment complex. Don't expect them to be like amazing because like I said, this is an internship. One of the most important details, however, is that the bus stops are only at the Commons, Chatham, and Vista Way. There is not a bus stop in Patterson. Patterson is right next to Chatham, so I would see people from Patterson walk to the Chatham bus stop. It's not that long of a walk. Me personally, I don't think that it's that bad, but if you would like the bus stop to be close to you, maybe not choose Patterson. In terms of my opinion on which housing complex is the best, I don't know if I would say that one is the best, but I did like Chatham a lot, if that gives you an answer. I guess what I've heard a lot of people argue is that the Commons is the best one because I think it's the newest one. I've been there and it is pretty nice, but I, I liked Chatham a lot. So I guess I'd recommend Chatham because again, I did not have complaints about it. All right, so the next question is, how did you deal with getting homesick? I would say that staying close to your friends helps you to get over that because at first I was very nervous. I didn't know a lot of people. So of course, if you're moving to a new place with all new people, you are gonna start thinking of home and missing home. Stay with people that you're close to and keep yourself distracted. That's a big thing that helped me a lot with homesickness was keeping myself distracted. I mean, I had a busy schedule anyway, so I always had something that I had to do, whether it was making a video, going to work, going to the parks, hanging out with friends, making plans, like whatever. I just made sure that I kept that constant. And as long as I was distracted and had all of those things going, like the homesickness didn't bother me. And then of course, just being in Disney because I'm so obsessed, like I'm happy when I'm here. I'm not saying that like that made me not miss my family. I'm just saying that like, it was really easy to be able to avoid homesickness because I was in a place that I love so much. So a lot of people ask me what one of the best or most rewarding things was that I took away from the program. There's a ton of things that I took from the program, but I guess I can narrow it down to two things. So sorry, I have two, I just have to say both. The first one is absolutely 100% positively making guests happy. I got compliments a lot from guests. I definitely made a lot of people happy, I can tell. It is literally such a rewarding feeling knowing that you made a guest's day or that you brought the Disney magic to them. That's something that I tried so hard to do every day, even on the days that I wasn't feeling very positive and I was having like some down days. I still, when I went to work, would try my very best to just remember like these people who are visiting Disney, it may be their first time. It may be their only time. Disney is known for their magic. Knowing that I'm working there and I'm able to bring that magic to others is, oh, it makes me so happy. Not even just making magic moments and like giving them free stuff or something, like also just like talking to them. There were people that came from all over the world and asking them about like where they're from or asking them about their trip or asking them how they've been enjoying their trip to Disney, what their favorite part is, stuff like that. They love having those conversations like more than you would think. Yes, there are some people who definitely don't like talking and I learned that in trying to talk to them, but like whatever. Most people love having that conversation. They know that the cast member's job is to carry that Disney magic to others. And so doing that myself is definitely one of the most rewarding things. And the other thing is the friendships that I made. I have mentioned before that I didn't really have a lot of friends before I came down here. And I was so nervous about making friends, but I made some of the best friends that I think I will ever make. And I'm gonna have those friendships forever. I know I will. And I love those people. I still talk to them. It sucks that they're not here and I miss them so much. And Disney is not the same without them. But when you make those friends on your program, you're gonna make some of the best memories that you will remember till the day that you die. Like, honestly, I have so many memories that I made on that program. I had the time of my life and I don't regret any of it. Friendships is definitely the next big thing. So I'm gonna try my very best to sum up this video and end it now. So real quick, I wanna mention, a lot of people ask me about classes on the college program. So yes, there are classes that are offered. However, I didn't take any of them and I didn't actually know anyone who did take them. So unfortunately, I don't really have any information on this from a personal perspective. I would highly recommend looking this up on 
online. All I do know is that you can get credit from these classes, you can get college credits, and I think that they're mostly business classes from what I've heard. But again, I really highly recommend researching this kind of thing. Another question that I got asked a lot that I don't know too much about is, can you do the college program if you're not from America? Yes, you can because there's something called the International College Program. It's basically the same thing as the DCP, but it's like for international students. It works the same way, but there are definitely certain things that are a lot different. I can't tell you for sure what those are because again, like I don't really have personal experience in it. So I would recommend researching that. The very last thing that I want to mention in this video, I really wanted to wrap it up with this question because a lot of you guys asked this. Is it easy to get employment with Disney after the college program? So obviously this is something that I haven't done yet because my college program got cut off because of the coronavirus. They had to send everyone home as most of you guys who are watching know. It depends on what approach you're using when it comes to finding employment with them because like I've said, the college program is the first step. It's kind of like the first little stepping stone in your journey with Disney. But one thing you can do, and I have mentioned this in my other videos, I mentioned it in my, I think it was my get ready with me video. So if you want, you can go ahead and watch that video. But what it is, is Transfer Genie. So Transfer Genie is an online thing that you can do. And I haven't used it myself yet because once the program got cut off, I wasn't considered employed by Disney anymore. So I couldn't do it, but it's something that you do while you're on the program and you put in for a transfer. So that transfer would be a part-time or full-time job with Disney. So you go online and they give you, I believe, a few options for roles that you want. So just like with the college program, it's limited. It's not any role and every role, it's only certain ones and you put two roles and then you pick i think two locations for each role and then they will contact you when they have a spot opening up for any of those locations that you put in so whatever one opens up first out of those four you'll get offered that and that's the only offer that you're gonna get you can't just be like oh well no i wanted one of the other ones like i think you just have to take that role i'm not gonna get into it too much because i don't want to say the wrong thing that's pretty much how transfer duty works and you could do that you have to do it by a certain date i talked more about that in that other videos so definitely watch that if you want to but you do have to put in that transfer on a certain date so however you don't have to do that you could also apply to a professional internship you need to make sure like I said to apply within the right amount of time so the applications for these professional internships are gonna go up early <gasps> my camera is dying I'm gonna wrap this up real fast because my camera is dying oh no you just have to make sure that you're paying attention to when the applications go up so you're gonna be on your program when these applications are going up so you just apply to a ton of those if you want and then if you know whether or not you got accepted for one of those then that way once you finish your college program you can go right into the professional internship or the full-time job I'm gonna have to stop here because my camera is dying but I'm probably gonna make more videos about this and I'm probably going to make a video on quick service so for those who asked any questions about quick service and that role I'm going to make a video about it don't worry hopefully this answered almost everything that you guys asked me I had a lot of fun filming this it's nice to be able to talk about the college program again so anyways that little blinking light saying my battery is dying is like stressing me out so much if this was your first time seeing my videos thank you so much for watching I have a ton of vlogs from my college program so if you like watching Disney vlogs definitely check those out make sure to follow me on social media at Bella Elizabeth with an extra H at the end. Like I said, if you have any other questions that are about the program in general, please, please, please comment them below. I will absolutely answer them for you or do my very best to. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you liked it. If you did, give it a like and subscribe if you're new here. And hopefully Disney will be open soon and I can start making vlogs again. Don't worry, those will be coming. So thank you guys for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye.